And that really struck me because I was thinking, who was he? Why do we not know anything about him? Why don't we ask questions? Why has no one talked to the IRS? <laughs> like, okay, yeah. where did this guy's money come from? All right, man. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Cutting Through. And I'm here with my uh, co-host, Mike Gatto. Mike, how are you? Great. Great to be Doing here. Doing good. I haven't seen you on TV a lot lately. Mm. What have been doing, man? I give the Democratic perspective on Newsmax uh, once or twice a week. And a lot of people think it's crazy. People tell me all the time, what are you doing? What are you doing going on? My Democratic friends, what are you doing going on there? Mm. And I say, look, I, I'm old fashioned. I'll debate anybody anytime about any topic. Yeah. If my viewpoints can stand up, great. And then people say, bah, bah, bah. I say well, do you only preach the choir? If you want to, I mean, no, you go right. out there and talk to people that are different. That's how you, that's how you behave. In my opinion. Right. You convert the unconverted, you know, convert the converted. Um, you know, I, this is a, this is a tough one. Something's been on my mind lately. Um, I saw a very, very interesting interview, a couple of them with a gentleman named Eric Weinstein. Eric Weinstein, incredibly smart guy. Um, really his bag is to go against those people that, uh, are anti-science. Um, but one thing that he is very, very interested in is, is Jeffrey Epstein. And so I watched a couple of his interviews and, um, I've really become intrigued by something that he talked about with Jeffrey Epstein. And that is what really was Jeffrey Epstein. And I would sum it up right with an even more pointed question. Was Jeffrey Epstein perhaps an intelligence operative? Yeah. Or a construct, right? Yes. Was he a construct? Um, and which leads to the question of whom, right? Of whom? It, but he brought up some really, some really, really um, salient points such as give me the top three uh, top three i think one of his best points was we have no record here he was a currency trader but he was a currency trader with so many weird rules that no one ever employed him as a trader yeah like who does that right yeah. if you're a, if you're a trader and you're an investor right you're working for bear stearns or whoever he was working for i know he did work for them then he created his own uh, based in the virgin islands you usually you, you can have standards but you you don't make the rules by which you will accept clients so complex that no one qualifies to actually do anything unless you're trying not to, to have them away. Yeah. You know, and, and a fascinating point on that, which is um, I watched one of the interviews with uh, with Weinstein and, um, you know, his basic point was trust your instincts. When you meet somebody who kind of gives you the willies, trust your instinct. I had a very similar financial experience lately where we had a guy over to our house for a party and, uh, you know, he was kind of talking about like he's this uh, futures trader and, uh, you know, but the answers he gave just they just didn't sit with me. They just didn't really sit right with me. And so we actually Googled him and uh, there it is, you know, front page of Google that he's under indictment for her failing. Uh, he told all these people that he was some kind of trader, but he didn't really trade um, these things at all. He actually just told them that he would tell them how to do it. And uh, so you, yeah. you got to trust your instinct on this stuff. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's a very good example. And he did talk about, I can touch on that in a second. Um, the second thing he talked about was that there's no record of his trades. So here he was a currency trader, you know, a big time, you know, working for these big investment houses or working for this big investment house of his own, but there's no records. You have to file, right? But because he was based in the Virgin Islands, he chose a place where he didn't have to file public papers. Fast. But there's not, there's no, there's not even an income tax return that we can find of Jeffrey Epstein showing exactly how much money right? He was worth. So we have a guy who, who, who proposes, or not proposes, he's stating that he's a, a currency trader, an investment guy, but yet his rules for being one of his clients are so complex that no one actually is a client of his. The second thing is we have no records of any of his trades, right? Nothing. nothing there's nothing like, oh, that's an Epstein trade. Oh, that Epstein did it again, right? <laughs> nothing. There's nothing out there. The third thing that he brought up was 
where did he get his money from? There is no record of this guy who, again, put himself out there as a quote-unquote billionaire, but no one could find any money. The only place that people can think of the money where it might have come from was from his partner. His father-in-law or something like that? Yes. Or, 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 yeah, one of his mentors and allegedly his father-in-law, but that still would probably not total what he was able to claim that he That's had. right. So, and, and, this, and this brings another point, which is <clears throat> I always tell people, beware of people with murky origin stories. If somebody <laughs> won't, if somebody's got some very hazy story of how they made yeah. their money, chances are there's something they're not telling you. There's something they're not telling you. Right. And that, that, that seems to be the case with Epstein also, where Ghislaine Maxwell, her father has a missing fortune, right? Mm -hmm. We don't know where Mr. Maxwell's fortune went, but suddenly now we have Jeffrey Epstein with another fortune of his own that suddenly appears, apparently, because we can't trace it back. because Self-made. 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 <laughs> so I'm like, who was this guy? Now back to, the, so those are the three things that really caught my attention. Um, the third thing, uh, not the third thing, sorry. Um, what he, what Weinstein talked about was when he went to visit Epstein, because he had to talk to him about an investment. He was trying to get him to invest in something. And someone said, oh yeah, you should go talk with Epstein. He likes investing in these, you know, high education things, higher education things. So Weinstein went to go visit him at the former Helmsley, you know, mansion uh, that he now owned, right? And he sits there, he invites him in. And Jeffrey Epstein comes in and he's talking like, yeah, big day of trading. You know, <laughs> like, it's like what? who talks like that in the business, right? Yeah. And, and didn't, Ooh, didn't he say it was, like, it was like that meme where, you know, you've got, there's that meme around the internet where you've got the picture of um, Steve Buscemi. Uh, Steve Buscemi. And he's like, hello, fellow children. Hello, <laughs> yes, skaters or, right, or whatever. Right. Hello, fellow rockers, right? And yeah. you know, he's an undercover yes. agent. Right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly, right. And that's how it came across. He was like, oh my God, who talks like that? Yeah. Ooh, big day of trading. Boy, am I tired. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes in and he, he has a, he sits at a table that's long and narrow like a coffin and it has an American flag over it. And then he has a young woman sitting on his lap and he's lifting her up on his knee, up and down, up and down, up and down. And she's jiggling all over and he's staring at him like Epstein is staring at Weinstein like, are you looking at her? Are you looking at her? You know, and finally, you know, he's like, I got to get out of here. But his bottom line is and what I'm trying to get to is he's like, that was evil. Like, I just met evil uh, face to face. And that really struck me because I was thinking, who was he? Why do we not know anything about him? Why don't we ask questions? Why has no one talked to the IRS? <laughs> like, okay, yeah. where did this guy's money come from? How well, if much you're like, it worth? I mean, you, you, start, you start from the basics. If you're like most Americans and you believe that Epstein did not kill himself, right? then that by definition is a conspiracy. It doesn't make you a conspiracy theorist. It just means that there had to be some people out there who conspired to make sure that the cameras were off and to make sure that there were means and mechanisms for him to, uh, to be taken out in a quiet way. And then you start to look at some of the other stuff, which is he had these, these uh, very shady codependent relationships with many people in the halls of power. It seems like he cultivated political relationships where he was trying to get what the Russians call compromat, which is some type of, uh, you know, embarrassing or often of a sexual nature uh, dirt on high ranking political officials so that they would do his bidding. And you start to wonder then, OK, well, who is behind this? Right. And I think this is the key point. If a foreign intelligence service was behind him, you know, it's one thing to use, you know, prostitutes her in their 30s or 40s or 50s. It's another thing entirely to do what they did, which is to use people who are underage. That is sick. It's disgusting. And the whole thing is sick and disgusting. But this was particularly reprehensible because what this man did was so awful. And you know what he did to people was so awful. And so you start to say, gee, this could be a big scandal if this ever comes out that this was, you know, uh, the government of, of, of Dubai or, you know, whatever, who, who was behind this intelligence operation. Yeah. So you, you've kind of cut to where I was going, which was, I don't think he was an American operative. Right. 
I don't I mean, think it was the and, American and, government. And let's, let's, let's rewind for a bit. I mean, American intelligence is forbidden from doing operations on American soil. Um, people, you'll see in the movies that the CIA is doing stuff on American soil. No, they can't do that. The FBI can go undercover. There's various other law enforcement agencies that can, but the CIA cannot do operations on American mm -hmm. soil. We know that Epstein operated on American soil. Mm -hmm. So he's, I believe he was not CIA. I yeah. And, and let's, let's also differentiate between, under, he was not undercover. He was constructed. Right. Yes. He was, right. someone said, you are going to be this. And you are now constructed, right? They didn't place him in another place, right? They didn't put him undercover. They right. constructed him out of hole. Um, what was he before? Who knows? No one freaking knows. The guy appeared, you know, do you ever see the movie Being There? I've uh, not, not seen that. Uh, with Peter Sellers. Great movie. It's my favorite political movie. Um, anyway, he. but any, my point is he just appeared. Right. One day. Yeah, and, and you take some of this, these indicia, right, that people who know him talked about the fact that he had an Austrian passport sometime in the Habsburg. Like, well, yeah, Habsburg. <laughs> He's in Habsburg. No, no, but but I mean, you know, he had an Austrian passport. He, you know, had very, very strong relationships with other countries. Right. And so, you know, and I think you know, most evidence, uh, at least what I've seen from the videos that have been put forth by Mr. Weinstein, by a lot of other people, um, the allegations were that this guy was a cutout or an operative or a construct or whatever you want to call it of the Israeli Mossad. Um, Weinstein has said some, a sentiment that I share, which is I'm a supporter of Israel. I would be very heartbroken if this turned out to be an Israeli operation. And I think there would be a lot of blowback. Look, whatever country this is, I mean, you know, as we joked, if, if this was Austria itself or you know, some random obscure country, if this was the Maldives, there would be a lot of blowback for, for them having run this operation. And that's, that could be why there is so much secrecy. Which of course is why once he was captured, because they, you know, think about what they were doing. They took a person out of whole cloth, constructed a brand new person out of him and essentially gave him not unlimited money, but gave him a lot of money, probably mid six figures or mid, sorry, mid nine figures. I don't think it was. A, I think no one believes it was a billion, right? Sure. They, sure. but he tried to look. Actually, <laughs> Weinstein. I hate to keep quoting this guy, but Weinstein had a great quote. They said he took, he took a an ingot of gold, right, and hammered it out <laughs> into gold leaf, so yeah. it could spread as far as possible to make to give him the image, right, right. of being this billionaire guy. Yeah, um, but if you look between beneath it, you know he, he wasn't a billionaire. He, he said things to, to to try to look very hard like he was a billionaire, and yet that's oh not my island, how, yeah, exactly. Yeah, how billionaire right. he So let me ask you this: Is there a precedent? Is there other examples out there of foreign intelligence agencies doing similar? Yeah, things? the Mossad, the Mossad. Wow. They they had a gentleman in the Middle East, and they had him go, and he went into I forget the country. We can. But it was a conservative Muslim country, right? If I yeah, remember. conservative Muslim country. They had him go there, and then he became – he had unlimited money. He began to hold orgies, Jeez. sex parties, and to, to – right? To compromise, to get the compromise. Sure. And yeah. um, fortunately, he was found out, right? Wow. And they had to get rid of him. So, I mean, there are – the Mossad does have examples of where they have done this before. I believe – so if you want to know what I believe, I believe that he probably was – and that they took him out because it was only a matter of time before he started talking. I think that what undid Jeffrey Epstein was, one, his own horrific carnal desires, right? right. Like he was given this brand new construction of a human, but he couldn't contain his own horrific carnal drive. And that eventually caught up to him. Secondly, was the emergence of the internet. Yeah. Right. It's easy to have these brand new humans that someone like the Mossad or the CIA can create. Um, but once you have the internet age, once we entered, right, 2003, 2004, and people got access to online and think, okay, well, let me look this dude up. Right. Yeah. Who is he? And, and, and that's, that's one of the ironies is, you know, we, we, we talked about this person who came to a cocktail party at my house and was, using terms that even I, I'm, I know a little bit about finance, but that I thought were questionable and kind of, you know, marked him as a, as a and then, you know, I looked him up in the internet and one of the first results was an indictment. <laughs> it was like, geez, okay, well, so my, my instincts are right. And, you know, 
and so that's a powerful that's a powerful point, right? Is that they might have started to create this guy back before there was Correct. any capability for this, and you that's know, right. it's easy to walk into a new town and be like, "Hi, my God, oh, I'm the." the biggest vacuum salesman uh, from Duluth, Idaho, you need a vacuum, you come to me. Right. And like nowadays you can look that stuff up. You can find right. out. What someone's BS. Right. And I, I think that was, I think once we started hitting the internet age that Jeffrey Epstein's clock was ticking and then combine that with his, his insatiable criminal carnal drive that it was just a matter of time before whoever created him, I already said who I think it likely was, but whoever created him really had to get rid of him. And his partner, Maxwell, I guess, you know, she's like not talking. Um, from everything I've read, she is not saying a word. She is just being the perfect prisoner holding yoga classes or whatever. So, um, and, and you know, you could even, you could even question did, how much did she know? Right. I mean, it's a rule in intelligence agencies that you are allowed to tell your spouse that what you do. A lot of times in the movies, it's, uh, oh, their spouse doesn't know and ha ha ha. But gen generally, you are, you are entrusted with telling your spouse. But on an operation this significant, and this was not, I don't think it was his legal spouse, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how much did he tell her? Or was she just a willing, complicit participant in all these sick acts? Hard to know. This is one of those things that I hope the truth comes out in. I hope that, you know, 10, 20 years from now, we we find out the truth, but you know, you look at the grand conspiracies or the grand uh, things that people doubt, like the Kennedy assassination decades after people are still searching mm -hmm. for truth. Well, you know, Mike is two guys that work in politics. Um, you and I have talked about this before. There's the world that we work in and then there's the world beyond the world that we work in, right? There's the world that we, that we know there are the people that we know there are the people that own the things. And then there are the people that own the people that own the things. <laughs> right. And I think what Jeffrey Epstein did, this whole Jeffrey Epstein incident, this whole Jeffrey Epstein, Ep Ep Epstein episode, is it gave us a really small glimpse into that world of the people that own the people that own the things. Yeah. And I don't think we were meant to get that look. And I think we were. And I think that those people who are probably, you know, calling the shots are doing everything they can to cover it all up. And they've been doing a good job so far. A, a real world example of a glitch in the matrix, right? I mean, yeah, uh, you know, perfect. It's like, yes, we, we were not supposed to see this this thing, and it was not supposed to get out. But uh, mm -hmm. hopefully, the truth does get out some point soon. Yeah. Well, you could disagree with us. You could think we're crazy. You can call me a conspiracy nut, um, but um, I'd be interested in hearing that. Or if you believe what, we, if you agree with what we have to say about Jeffrey Epstein um, and those people around him, or if you know something that you think we should discuss i we'd love to hear that too um but mike thanks thank you for again for letting me rant on something <laughs> that was on my mind but this whole this whole thing has been on my mind and it probably will be for a long time so we'll probably have more episodes on this great talking with you as always hey if you like what you hear like and subscribe it really means a lot and we would love to have you coming back every week thank you